So maybe you've heard of virtual assistants, maybe you know people who are using virtual assistants, but you're not really sure if they're suitable for you and if there's a benefit. I was talking to Nikki last week and she had exactly the same question. So a little bit of a case study we'll run through, coming right up. Okay, so last week I caught up with an old friend, Nikki, who started her own small logistics business. And basically what she does is she works with a lot of customers who are selling online on eBay, on Amazon. No, not Amazon, because they distribute the product, but eBay and other sites like that, where they're actually selling products online and she gets the products sent all over the world. So she has a warehouse full of all the customers' products, the customers send their orders in, and she arranges all of the freight and the delivery out to uh, the customer's customer. So really cool business. And I was down there having a chat and seeing how the business was going uh, and she wondered if I had any tips on the warehouse. It was all going really well until I started to talk to Nikki about how the business was operating and who was doing what. And this is going to resonate with you, I think, because you know we won't talk about the numbers, uh, but basically Nikki is working flat out and she has a couple of the staff in the warehouse helping her, but she's doing all the sales, all the marketing, all the admin. This is probably starting to you know, be very familiar to you. So I went through a very simple exercise with Nikki, which I'll share with you here. If you're wondering if there is a potential benefit for you in having a virtual assistant and you're thinking, oh look, what could they do? Because Nikki really didn't understand the concept at all. But as she went through the list of all of these different tasks, I said, you realize you need a VA? And she said, well, what would they do for me? So I got her to grab a piece of paper, and you should do this yourself, stick a line down the middle, and here, put all the tasks in the business that you think you must do. And look, typically they're going to be sales related, um, anything where there's you know, maybe direct interaction with the customer, probably, depending on your type of business, actually delivering the service. And then over here, I asked Nikki to write down lots of the routine tasks that she was doing, but someone else could do. And so let me share the list that we came up with. Not sure if you can read this on the camera, but let me go through it. So, sales. Nikki does all the selling in her business, and that's very common with a, with a startup or a new business, small business. The founder, the managing director, is very often the person who's best at sales. So certainly in the early days, selling is a key activity for you to be doing in your business. We've then got sending orders out. So her business is you know, dispatching orders for her clients all over the world. And she, she and her staff in the warehouse actually go and select you know, from thousands of different products and they pack them up and they call the transport companies and they send those out. And then a VA couldn't really do that. Uh, and she's very experienced in the industry and she negotiates all of the freight or the transport contracts. So she gets really good uh, you know, transport costs for her customers. And then we started going through this side. I think that's where Nikki started, you know, the lights started going on a bit. Um, so she's got a really effective website, but you know, she's got a company here in Australia uh, putting it together, that's fine, but there's probably a lot of work that could be done on that you know, by an outsourcing service, by VAs, a lot more cost effectively. Social media, she recognizes social media is really important to bring in new customers, but just doesn't have the time to do much. Um, look, she's, she's great, you know, she'll jump on in front of the camera and she'll do stuff, but you know, it's all the back end stuff she doesn't have time for. So that's great for a VA. I said, how do you invoice customers? And she went through all the paperwork and she said, look, every time we send an order out on behalf of one of our customers, uh, that here's the order that we send out. It tells us who to send it to. I then calculate the cost of putting the order together here in the warehouse and the freight cost. And then she says, I have to go through all of these and add them all up and create an invoice to send the customer. You know, and there might be 10 of these. She said, I spent about two days a week doing that. <laughs> You can see where I'm going with this. So I actually called one of my VAs in the Philippines on Skype. And we had a video Skype chat. Uh, and I basically said, Julia, uh, look, here's the process. Uh, Nikki has to get all these invoices together. She's basically got to add up you know, all of the costs 
that she has to charge the customer. She then has to create a customer invoice and send that off. I said, you could do that, couldn't you? She said, yeah, of course. And, and Julia and Nikki had a little bit of a chat about the process and you know, the penny's starting to drop here. Nikki's thinking, hang on, I can get someone to do this for me. Uh, we then talked about other things like paying the bills. Um, I have virtual staff who do all of our banking and bill paying and, and all the rest of it and paying customer, uh, paying suppliers. Customer service, ultimately. I said to Nikki, how often are you touching, engaging with your customers? You know, you could have someone actually managing all of the emails that are going to customers and coming in. Uh, you, you could do sort of regular phone calls to customers to, to catch up with them. Now, a virtual assistant could do that. And it was really interesting that, you know, by the time, and there was more things on the list, but by the time we actually went through this list, Nikki, Nikki admitted that a virtual assistant would save her two to three days a week. Two to three days a week. Imagine that in your business, if you could get back two or three days a week, what would you do with that? You'd have more time off if you wanted it, but hey, if you're a business owner like me, uh, you don't kind of think that way. You'll be out there selling to, you know, meeting more customers, developing your business, growing your business, and all of this back end stuff you know, Nikki now realizes can be done by someone else. So I've actually got um, my CFO popping down to see Nikki at the end of this week, and he's gonna talk through her financial processes and things and see what elements of that could be outsourced as, along with a lot of these other things. So maybe what we'll do in a couple of weeks is to pop down and shoot a video with Nikki and we'll see how it's all going. And it's a really interesting business that she's got as well. So we might have a, a look at that. So. The purpose of sharing this little discussion that I had last week was get yourself a bit of paper. If you haven't already got virtual assistants, stick a line down here on this side, write all of the things that you must do as the business owner. Although I can tell you over time, <laughs> you'll start to hand out some of that as well. But what are the things that are essential to the business that you think you've got to do? And then what are all the routine things that take up so much of your time during the week that, okay, it might take you an hour or two to teach someone, but someone else could actually do it for you. Go through that list and have a look and see if you can estimate how much time you could get back if you had a virtual assistant helping you. So really a uh, simple exercise, but worth going through you know, if you're struggling with the whole concept of what can I get them to do? Check it out, get you a bit of paper, line down the middle. Okay, now you know how this works. Uh, if you enjoy these videos, do like and comment below. Do make sure you hit the subscribe button because we have new videos coming out every week, generally on a Wednesday, and I wouldn't want you to miss those. So we'll see you next week.